Hey everybody, Jim Neeb here. I'm going to do a really quick video. I'm going to try something here. I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, I got this brand new slab slayer bit. Um, a lot of people recommended it. Uh, it's very similar uh, to the Amana 2263 I have, but that's a three cutter bit. Uh, the, the bit, this, it's, the whole bit itself is not that much cheaper than the Amana bit. However, the cutters are significantly cheaper. Um, the Amana bits run anywhere from about $22 to $30 a piece for every one of these four edge cutters. This one on Slab Slayer is, uh, it was like 50 bucks for a pack of 10, so they're like five bucks. They're like six times cheaper. And when you're doing mesquite and stuff, you can burn through them pretty quick. The other thing is, if you can see, these, there we go. These are very, uh, they're not flat like the Amana. They actually have sort of a cup design, so I'm hoping they slice a little bit better. I'm actually going to switch the camera angle here. This side is a little bit better re resolution, but you can see this is more of a, a pocket uh, now. And if this would focus, so you can see there, they have sort of a cup, a, kind of a cup shape on them. Anyway, I was going to try this out in Mesquite to see what this bit would do, but as luck would have it, I'm working on a 610 Bobcat today that has a severely warped head. Um, it was sputtering today. We pulled it off and you can see it's got a huge gap on this side and I don't even know if this is recoverable. So uh, you can see between each bolt hole on this side, it's got a pretty big dip. So. It blew right through the head gasket on this because uh, of that um, gap. So I don't have a machine shop nearby and I'd really like to get this fixed today. And since I have my new slab slayer and the carbide cutters are so cheap, I thought I'm gonna try and mill this head flat on my CNC today. Uh, I know it's a CNC router, but hey, people cut aluminum on these all the time. And I've never, but I've never seen one of anybody use one of these bigger bits as you know, kind of a fly cutter. Um, but I think if I take it slow and use my alcohol mist system, uh, I think it should work. So we're gonna give it a shot. Um, maybe this is gonna turn out really bad. Uh, maybe it's not. <laughs> we're gonna see. So here's the head gasket that we took off first, and. Uh... It's obvious in the upper right corner there that the head gasket's totally eroded from uh, blow by. Um, and then there's a piece there on the lower right um, below the uh, upper right hole as well that was starting to erode. So this uh, made me start to look at the head to see why the head gasket got ripped away. So this is the head after about probably the first two passes, probably took uh, seven thousandths or so off at this point. Um, and you can really see the low spots uh, between cylinders, but especially the upper right corner there, that's, that's the two areas where it was just totally blowing by the head gasket. And after a pass or two more, now you can see that it's starting to get down to those two really bad areas. There's still some area in the upper left also that um, you can still kind of see the dirty pattern from the head gasket, but it hasn't milled down into fresh aluminum here yet. So next is the video showing um, it actually cutting down to this level.
And another pass or two here. We're getting pretty close, but still need to need to dig down through those uh, two low spots and get some of the upper left yet. So we're going to keep going for a couple more passes. And this is where I quit. Uh, I could have gone just a little bit more. You can see there's a little bit right uh, sort of over center of the piston there where on the right cylinder that didn't quite get down to fresh aluminum. And there's a little bit of the dip uh, in the upper right corner by the exhaust valve where it didn't quite get down to fresh aluminum, but it, there's plenty of head gasket area there to seat on that, and I really don't want to thin this head out anymore, so this is where I quit. All right, this turned out way better than I was even hoping for, so it is very, very smooth. Um, there's no ridges between passes that I can feel at all. You can see the brush marks from the, you know, the direction of the bit and everything. So here was my process. I basically sh bolted through the spark plug holes here down through my spoil board. So I wanted this to be really stiff and not move at all. So I put down a piece of three quarter inch MDF on top of my one inch spoil board and I was fortunate that the spark plug holes matched up with the two, uh, with the one, three inch spacing that's already in my spoil board. So basically I just dropped these carriage bolts down. I drilled holes in the MDF and then dropped them through the holes here and with big washers on both sides, tightened it up. And then what I did was, you know, I walked the bit around on all corners to make sure the gap was the same. And obviously it wasn't, so I had to shim up this end of the head and the back end of the head to get it to be essentially level with my um, Z-axis travel in, in both Y and X directions. So then I, so I, I a little bit of, you know, bolting it down, trying it, uh, un loosening it, reshimming it and stuff, and I got it where I wanted. So then what I did was I just, I didn't write a program, I just jogged back and forth essentially. So... I ran 50 inches per minute. Um, I ran the bit at 12,000 RPM, and I made, on the final pass, I ran at 14. Both of them cut very well. And my depth of cut was 3 thousandths of an inch. Um, judging from the sound of it, it could have probably cut five, but, you know, I wasn't really in any hurry. And I did notice uh, that with a, the heavier cut, the, the quality, the smoothness, it started to streak a little bit so um, and then you saw in the video I was running my uh, mister system that's just uh, isopropyl alcohol I did a video on that in the past but it works very good for cooling and stuff so uh, I checked the bits several times I got zero buildup on this uh, I really really liked this uh, slab slayer bit it's a it's a two and a half inch bore cutter obviously like I said it's got these curved uh, edges and I cannot tell the difference you know it basically that did no damage there's no chips there's no and, and you know three thousandths of an inch is very not very much at all and it's aluminum so it's soft but uh, um, in fact this aluminum is probably a lot less hard on it than my mesquite slab cutting because the mesquite uh, tends to have dirt and little rocks and stuff in the bark occlusions so it's pretty tough on bits but this just I'm I'm really happy with this. So, um, hey, if, you know if you want to mill off an aluminum head, I had to take twenty four thousandths off of this. Um, this thing was really warped. There were two right in this corner here. Basically, that's why I had to take twenty four between these these two bolts. I had a massive leak that totally burned out the head gasket, and this one probably would have too. But uh, by that one exhaust valve. Uh, but now it's very smooth very straight um, this should run uh, for another 50 years or whatever but um, really really happy with uh, this milling process I mean this slab slayer makes kind of a nice fly cutter for uh, if you don't happen to have regular metal machining equipment it makes these nice tiny little chips that my dust collector mostly picked up but um, Hey, it works pretty good. This is this is so smooth. I'm not even going to bother lap sanding it or anything. It's more than I like. I said I can't. There's no ridge at all that I can even feel with my 
fingernail on this last pass. So what I did was I went three mils at a time for each pass. I probably took maybe, a, a, I was just manually jogging, but I was taking between a half inch and a one inch step over each time. And then on the very last pass, I went and cut two thousandths instead of three. And then after I did the two, I basically just stepped over the whole thing again to get a really clean. So I did not Z down. I just basically did two passes over the whole thing at the same, same Z height for the end. And that's what really finished this up nicely. So uh, very clean finish, really impressed with this bit. And hey, you know, another use for the Avid. Um, I would suggest though, Absolutely make sure that you really have work holding in this case because you wouldn't want this to move slightly or vibrate loose and then have that bit grab, you know, dig in and gouge. So bolting it down solid to is, is very important, I think, but um, worked great. All right, this is the box that comes in, Slab Slayer. It's by, this is the two and a half inch version. There's a, there's a much larger version with a three quarter inch shank but uh, my route my spindle can't handle that this is from RIP precision tools so highly recommend this They're really cut aluminum well and I really and lots of other people have said it cuts wood very well so I'm anticipating that it's gonna do a good job for me there too so um this project turned out better than I expected I'm really happy with the slab slayer bit uh, Definitely cuts aluminum great, uh, very very smooth and clean. So I'm looking forward to trying it out on some wood next. But I will leave the links to the manufacturer for the slab slayer down below. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them um, below in the in the comment section. I always read and respond to everything. Thank you very much.